Hi, welcome to our presentation on re-examining calibration, the case of question answering. This is joint work with Chen, Seven, and Jordan. Let's first talk about what is calibration and why it matters. I have two questions that I don't have answer to, so I ask AI for help. Here are the answers I got along from AI and its related confidence. Question number one. The music scores in the three famous ballads, Swan Lake, The Sleepy Beauty, and The Night Collector are by who? Here, the AI answers George Branching with its confidence 0.65. Question number two. Who was the first African American to register to vote? Here, the AI answers the question Thomas Moody Peterson with confidence 0.42. Chang Lei, do you think these model predictions are correct or not? Hmm, that's hard to tell. The scores seem ambiguous to me, but I would guess the first one is correct and the second one is wrong. Okay, what if I change the model confidence to 0 and 1? Ah, now that's much easier to tell. Based on the confidence scores, I would say the second one is correct and the first one is wrong. Yeah, that's indeed correct. We devoted our paper to study how to adjust the confidence scores in order to help users differentiate the correct answers from the wrong ones. We call this user-centric calibration. Next, let's talk about how to measure calibration. The most popular metric is called expected calibration error, or ECE, where the goal is for the confidence to match the expected accuracy. It involves the bucketing mechanism where each bucket corresponds to a confidence range. Model predictions, visualized as a circle scale, are put into the buckets corresponding to their confidence ranges. For example, the predictions with confidence 0.24 and 0.26 are put into the bucket with range 0.2 to 0.3. Then we compute the difference between the average accuracy and the average confidence of each bucket. We then take the weighted average across all buckets as the ECE. Now let's evaluate calibration on some actual model. We will focus on open domain question answering since it is a practical task with many real-world applications such as search engines and digital assistants. We'll use a retriever reader pipeline. In particular, we use DPR as the retriever and BERT as the reader. When we fit the retrieved passages to the BERT reader, we get three logics from the classification head. The passage selection logic, the span slot logic, and the span end logic. When computing the confidence score for each answer span, one option is to directly sum up all these logics, but another option is to perform post hoc calibration, such as temperature scaling. The idea of temperature scaling is to divide the raw logics by an appropriate temperature scaler tau before passing through softmax. To apply temperature scaling on DPR bird, we try two settings. In joint calibration, we sum the passage selection, span start, and span end logics, and then divide the sum by the temperature scaler and then softmax over the top 100 answer spans to get the probabilistic confidence scores. In pipeline calibration, we first choose the top one passage based on the passage selection logic, and then sum the span slot and end logics for each of the answer spans in this passage, and then we perform temperature scaling. Based on the results here, temperature scaling seems to significantly lower ICE with both joint and pipeline calibration. But does this really mean temperature scaling solved the problem? Let's look at the distribution of confidence scores before and after temperature scaling. On the right figure, after the temperature scaling, most predictions are assigned similar confidence from 0.1 to 0.5. Moreover, when many predictions are clustered in the same bucket, it causes the cancellation effects, ignoring the instance level calibration error. For example, in this case, in the middle bucket, the correct and wrong predictions are put together the average accuracy is 0.5, and average confidence is 0.45. That seems pretty good for ECE. But in reality, what we want is for correct predictions to have high confidence, and for wrong predictions to have low confidence. Since ECE is flawed, let's come up with some better alternatives. The first idea coming to mind is to avoid the cancellation effect due to bucketing, and instead compute errors at the instance level where we basically sum the absolute difference between every prediction's confidence and accuracy. We call this instance calibration error, or ICE. However, ICE has another flaw. In the case where the model accuracy is very high and most predictions are correct, 
The correct predictions would dominate the loss, and the impact of overconfident wrong predictions will be underestimated. To fix that, we first introduce microaverage calculation error, or microCE. The idea is to compute the instance calculation error for the correct and wrong predictions separately, and then take the microaverage. In this example, we can see that although the correct predictions incur small ICE, the wrong predictions is way too overconfident and causes a large ICE. And microCE captures both sides of the story. In fact, ECE and ICE are very sensitive to the accuracy of the model. In this figure, ECE and ICE are very small at a highly accurate setting, even without calibration. This is in stark contrast with the low accuracy setting. In comparison, microCE stays stable regardless of the model accuracy. Now that we have established a battery metric, let's first see how existing calibration methods work under microCE. We see a clear trend that temperature scaling doesn't improve microCE, both in domain and OOD. Moreover, a bunch of other calibration methods, such as training a feature based classifier or neural re-ranker, doesn't improve microCE either. We thus propose a more effective calibration method, consistency calibration, or CONSCOR for short. The idea is simple. Through our training, if the model predictions stay the same, we assign a high confidence. If the model predictions change, we assign a low confidence. In this example, the model predicts urge overscale in the early epochs, but later on change to near diamond we assign a confidence of zero based on such inconsistency. Automatic evaluation shows that CONSCOR is the only method significantly improving microCE. Beyond automatic evaluation, more importantly, we conduct a human study where we present annotators 100 questions and the model predictions. We ask them to decide whether each prediction is correct. We compare the effect of only showing the predictions without the confidence, showing the raw model confidence, showing confidence calibrated by temperature scaling as well as CONSCAL. Showing the confidence obtained by CONSCAL significantly improves the human judgment, much better than raw confidence or temperature scaling. Surprisingly, annotators sometimes do not trust CONSCAL's confidence scores and overrule their own judgment, which results in worse F1 score. Furthermore, microCE ranks CONSCAL as the best method, agreeing with human evaluation, while ECE misleadingly favors temperature scaling. In conclusion, in this work, we put forth the idea of user-centric calibration and propose to use the microCE metric and the CONSCAL calibration method Human evaluation results verify that microC aligns with human preference and CONSCOP best improves human judgment. For future work, we would like to explore other methods to improve user-centric calibration and apply these methods in some important applications to bring real-world benefits.